Torgos is the new mode in Shadowlands, which gives you all kinds of crazy broken abilities to boost the power of your character to ridiculous levels. And in this video, we'll be going over what we've found to be the most unique, interesting, and fun of these powers that are sure to have a massive effect on your gameplay. And at number 10, we have the most simple of the powers, being the Treasure Finder powers. These anima powers are all focused around helping you find more powers. Mobs throughout the dungeon will randomly have anima power drops, and you won't know they do until you kill them. The only ones guaranteed to drop them are rares and the final boss of the floor. However, with these traits, you'll know exactly which ones have them, and ways to optimize your power gains. First, we have the Golden Idol Anima. This anima power allows you to see above enemies' heads whether they have a power or not, allowing you to skip mobs if you really don't wish to deal with them, and know that they have no powers to give. Next is the Enchanted Thieves Tool, giving you an extra anima power option to pick on occasion, which is quite useful as sometimes all of the choices are not so good, or simply you want a higher chance at getting that one power you really want. And last is Mobius Graft. This power allows you to reroll the choices from the final boss of the floor, allowing you to veto the choice if you do not like any of the choices you've been given, and try to roll for a more specific power. All three of these together really help you empower your runs, manipulating and managing what you get from your powers. Next at number 9, we have a very quick and simple one, the Crumbling Aegis. This disintegrating shield gives you its last bit of protective force. From when you choose this power, you have one and a half minutes of being entirely immune to all damage and harmful effects. Yes, one and a half minutes. This is a paladin's bubble's bigger brother, and it's powerful. Especially since when you collect a power, you can save the choice in case you're in combat and can't select it right away. Meaning if you use this power, you can find a big group of mobs, pull it together quick, and then use this for an unstoppable room clear. And at number 8, we have a power that allows you to feel like a demon hunter a little bit, the Negation Well. This power grants an extra powerful jump, straight out of the leap from the burning feet and horrific visions. By simply pressing your jump button, this ability launches you far into the air and ahead, allowing you to move quite quickly and even clear long gaps that are quite important in some areas. Maybe even jump over some AoE or a trap. This ability has got you covered. No more Demon Hunter only areas with a power like this. And it even allows you to jump further than Demon Hunters. Of course it also works with Demon Hunters as well to make them jump even further. For number 7 we have in concept a simple one, mounts. So, for some context, the infinite towers of Torgos are set within the Maw. While most of the floors are seen inside of the towers, tunnels, and hallways, some floors have you in wide open pathways and floating chunks of stone connected by chains. However, all of these floors are considered indoors, and with such you cannot mount. So like the classic raid of On Courage, we have mounts that are made specifically for Torgos. However, these Torgos mounts come in the way of rare powers, or powers from specific rares. The two best examples being the Spectral Bridle. This anima power gives you an item that, on use, transforms you into a spectral horse, similar in function to the Druid Travel form, allowing a friend to ride on your back. There's also the Maw Rat Harness, an on-use item that mounts you on the back of a giant Maw Rat, a creature native to the tower. While acting like a normal mount that's instant cast, it breaks on combat. Or it does until you get the Maw Rat Stirrups power, which allows you to use this mount in combat. And as we saw in Draenor World PvP, mounting in combat is very powerful, and that huge passive speed increase will be very sought after once you get god mode powers stacked up, and you just want to move through the floors faster. And at number 6, we have a power that is too silly not to include, the Scroll of Enclaver. This power activates on arcane damage, as long as they're not an elite mob. You have a chance to transmogrify your enemy into a random piece of furniture. A box, a chair, a lamp or even a basket of fruit, in turn instantly killing them. While it is just a power that instantly kills mobs sometimes, much like the Purification Protocol Azerite power, how it does it is the fun part, polymorphing enemies into non-living objects, to make your enemies not living anymore. And do not worry for classes that are not mages and have no natural arcane damage, while it procs on arcane damage only, Torgos has a few random proc powers that allow you to randomly proc arcane damage, so you can safely combo this trait with those ones. And at number 5, we have Yelshir's Power Glove. Better for the spellcaster types, the Power Glove gathers power as you cast damaging spells and abilities, and can stack up to 100 times. How do you expend these charges, you may ask? Well, you stop your casting, you stop your rage shenanigans, and you run up to the boss and just slug the death beast right in the face. And well, 
Think of One Punch Man and you basically get the gist of what this power does. It's probably not the most useful power in here, but it is definitely a fun one that I'll be picking up any chance I get. And at number four, we have the Ethereum Spell School Anima powers. These powers give you a small benefit at the cost of another type of damage you deal being significantly reduced. However, these only affect specific schools, and with such, you can plan accordingly. Are you a Fire Mage? Well, you don't do physical damage, so feel free to pick up the Ethereum Anima power that reduces that. Nor do you do Holy. There are a few of these, all of them give you a benefit while reducing the damage and healing of a specific type by 75%. The Ethereum Muzzle gives you a 25% cooldown reduction, but weakens your physical damage. The Ethereum Teardrop increases the power of your damaging and healing critical strikes by 30%, but weakens all of your frost damage. The Ethereum Alembic increases your mastery by 30%, but weakens your arcane damage, and etc, etc. These powers all give small benefits for a massive cost. But, well, if your class does not even use those damage or healing types, there's no real reason not to give them up for more power. And at number 3, we have the Bottled Enigma. Obtaining this power by picking up this bottle and, I guess, strapping it to your hip or something, it produces a cloud of smoke. This cloud of smoke follows you around with a somewhat small radius, about 20 yards. Anyone within this circle has no problems at all. Nothing changes for them, but those outside. Well, anyone outside the circle cannot get line of sight of you. They can see you, but you see a powerful caster casting a spell and you are out of interrupts, will just run away. And the second you break out of the circle surrounding you, it, well, can't see you anymore, and will need to run back to you in order to get inside your circle. This works well with the power Crown of Obstinance, that just right out slows enemy cast by 30% if they're near you. These two in combo can easily simplify casters in Torghost. And at number two, we return to the line of Ethereum Anima powers. However, these powers are very different. Instead of weakening spell schools, they weaken you as a player. How you may ask? By breaking the fourth wall. The first of these three is the Ethereum Veil. This anima power reduces the cost of your abilities by 25%. So less rage, less mana, etc. So there is some classes that this is less useful on, but for most this is pretty good. And what's the cost? Well, you can't open your map anymore. Yeah, you just can't open your map. Your map is gone, your map just vanishes. So yes, you still have your mini map, but no more big map, which when exploring can be pretty important. Although this power is sort of moot if you're playing with friends and they can still see their maps. Next is the Ethereum Diffuser. This one is a good way to stop bad habits. Why is that, you may ask? Well, this one stops you from moving backwards, as in you can't backpedal. Did you know, backpedal has you moving slower than if you were moving forward. Yeah, and because of these, there are very few times you should backpedal. Unless you're a tank trying to position mobs or something, it's better to mouse turn around and just run than it is to back up. Unless you're a keyboard turner, then this kind of efficiency doesn't really matter to you and is a pretty good one too. The cost of being unable to press your S key. This causes all damage you take to be replicated and deal split damage to all nearby enemies as shadow damage, turning you into a damage mirror. The final Ethereum is the Ethereum Weights. This power increases your stamina, agility, strength, and intellect by 30%. That's a big buff for every single class that is your major stat. And 30% stamina, that's huge. Good for DPS, tanks, and heals, what could possibly be the cost? You can't jump. Yeah, you just can't jump anymore. Makes it pretty hard to pick because, yes, while you don't need to jump often in Torgos, those times that you do will really feel this power. Especially bad if you already picked the Negation Whale power as well. And at number one, we have something that can just break so many classes and in itself is just so unique and fun to play with. We all remember the Legion Legendary Rings that gave you access to an extra talent point. Now in Torgos, this returns. This power gives you an extra talent. While we've had this ability in the past, it's still a very cool effect, allowing you to have unique effects based on your class that are not normally available. However, unlike the Legion Legendary Rings, which only give you one extra talent max, these powers can be selected multiple times. These talents give a random talent, however, always from the left row, as the left row is always passive or empowers an ability you already have. If you already have this talent, you can of course just choose another one anyway, as it gives you a free talent change in that road during Torghost. However, because you can get this power multiple times, you can eventually get an extra talent in every single row. 
leading to, yes, two talents in every row. A total of 14 talents, leading to some pretty hilarious gameplay since classes are definitely balanced around only having one. Alright, and that's the list. So far, anyway. Torgos is still in early development, so this video might age as a showcase of what it once was in the future, and should be a fun little primer on what to expect with some of the crazy powers you can get in there. This video was edited by my wonderful editor, Felplague. If you have any Shadowlands questions or video ideas, go bug him on Twitter about them, since he can pick his own topics to work on. And also, fun fact, did you know only 29% of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel? 